So thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, the results of the interim results of our phase one trial of AG221, which is a selective inhibitor of the IDH2 mutant enzyme. And I want to walk you through, because this is a new way of thinking about treating AML, I want to walk you through a little bit about what IDH is and what IDH does and what mutant IDH does. So the normal function of isocitrate dehydrogenase is to help your cells make energy. So isocitrate dehydrogenase, or IDH, converts isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate, and that's a normal cellular process. When, have you, when you have a mutation in IDH, what ends up happening is that um, alpha-ketoglutarate, instead of being converted to isocitrate instead of being converted to alpha-ketoglutarate, alpha-ketoglutarate ends up being converted to this substance called beta-hydroxyglutarate. Increased levels of beta-hydroxyglutarate end up causing what we think is epigenetic changes to the cell, which causes a block in the ability of the cell to differentiate into a normal, healthy adult neutrophil. And that's essentially what leukemia is. You get stuck at the myeloblast stage of differentiation. You get your myeloblasts accumulating, and it causes um, various degrees of bone marrow failure. The hypothesis is is that if you can decrease the levels of 2-HG, you can release the breaks from these cells that are blocked from differentiating, and you can cause that normal differentiation program to happen. You get normal adult, adult healthy neutrophils, and the leukemia is reversed. Um, IDH2, so these mutations come in two flavors, IDH1 and IDH2, depending on where in the cell this, um, these, uh, these uh, enzymes are located. IDH2 mutations occur in 9% to 13% of patients with AML and 3 to 6 percent of patients with myelodysplastic syndromes. Now, IDH1 mutations occurred in 6 to 10 percent of patients with AML and 3 percent of patients with MDS. And these numbers, since this is a sort of a new area, these numbers are constantly being updated. So this is, as we just talked about, a phase one uh, first-in-man study, just a little bit of the study background. AG221 is oral. It's given um, either once or twice a day in continuous 28-day cycles. <laughs> It, the study is enrolling mutation-positive hematologic malignancies that includes relapsed or refractory AML, MDS, or untreated AML. The key outcome measures are, are uh, pretty standard for a phase one trial. Safety and tolerability, looking at dose-limiting toxicities, looking at the maximum tolerated dose and the recommended phase two dose, looking at the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and uh, characterizing the differentiation effect of this uh, agent. Uh, this update that we're giving, the last update was given at the meeting of the European Hematology Association. Um, we've treated an additional 38 patients for a total of 73 patients uh, on study as of October 1st, 2014. We've explored four additional dose cohorts with cumulative daily doses up to 300 milligrams. Uh, 300 milligrams. We've initiated four expansion cohorts at the 100 milligram once a day level, and there's in parallel dose escalation with both um, twice a day and once a day dosing regimens. So these are the patient characteristics. I want to draw your attention to just some uh, salient points. Number one, the age uh, of the patients is 67 years, which really reflects the age of patients in the United States with AML. Most of the patients had relapsed or refractory AML, 55 of them. And um, it was a very poor risk patient population. So 18% of the patients had had a prior bone marrow transplant. There are other characteristics of the patients that make them very, very unlikely to have responded to um, uh, further efforts at, uh, with, with regular chemotherapy. In terms of the safety of the drug, it's really been extremely well tolerated to date. Um, a maximum tolerated dose has not been reached. The most common adverse events are nausea, fever, diarrhea, and fatigue. I just want to bring your attention that these are um, all cause adverse events. These are not treatment-related adverse events, and these are adverse events that you typically see in patients with uh, acute myeloid leukemia. There's been one dose-limiting toxicity, which is a grade 5 uh, hypoxia at 100 milligrams twice a day, and that in, was in a patient who also had unrelated fungal pneumonia and septic shock. The 30-day all-cause mortality was 4.1%. And the 60-day all-cause mortality was 13.7 percent. I want to draw your attention to um, one serious adverse event, which I think is very interesting from a scientific perspective, and that's leukocytosis. So leukocytosis is when you have an elevation in white blood cells, and we think that's part of the differentiation effect of the drug. So what happens is that um, as you get your drug, the, the, these myeloblasts start differentiating, the white blood cells go up, and all of these patients who had um, leukocytosis actually went on to achieve a complete remission or a partial remission. There have been 11 deaths reported on study, two were possibly related, a sepsis and hypoxia, and one due to atrial flutter. This is the best overall response by cumulative daily dose level, and I, I want you to, I want to draw your attention to the uh, right-hand column, which is the total column. So what you can see from this is that 15 of the patients had a complete remission or a complete remission with incomplete blood count recovery, meaning they've cleared their blast from their bone marrow, but they're their, um, their platelets have not yet reached over 100,000. Their neutrophils may, may not have reached over 
um, 1,000 yet, but they've had complete remission or complete remission with incomplete blood count recovery. That's 15 of the patients. 10 of the patients have had a partial remission, and you know, but I'll tell you anyway, what that means is that you've had a 50% decrease in your blast in your bone marrow, but you've had, this is a, a real partial remission, you've had normalization of your neutrophil count and normalization of your platelet count. 17 patients had stable disease, and there were only two patients and the efficacy of valuable population, which is the population of patients who had a day 28 response assessment who had progressive disease. For an overall response rate, if you add up the complete remissions, uh, complete remission with incomplete count recovery and the partial remissions of 56%. This is the duration of treatment and the best overall response. So this is something that, um, that we've been very interested in because obviously we want this agent to last a long time. You can see that in the green, are the partial remissions, and in various shades of blue are the complete remissions or complete remissions with incomplete count recovery. I think what's notable is that the partial remissions are, uh, are staying on study for as long as you can see, as long as nine months, and many of them have been on for as long as six months, and the complete remissions have been on for a fairly long time also, and it really sort of shows that at least to date, the responses appear durable. In addition, what's not shown on this slide is that the stable disease patients, those patients who haven't had their blasts go up, but their blasts have sort of remained stable maybe in the, in the 10, 11, 12 percent range, they also, many of them have been uh, on treatment for as long as the patients who achieve partial remissions or complete remissions. So in conclusion, um, AG221 is well tolerated in patients with advanced hematologic malignancies. The inhibition of beta-hydroxyglutarate is greater than 90% in patients with an IDH2 R140 mutation. Consistent with the preclinical models, we're seeing clear evidence of myeloblast differentiation and those myeloblasts turning into healthy adult neutrophils. The overall response rate is 56%, uh, including six complete remissions, and the remissions appear durable to date. Dose expansion is continuing, and there are the four expansion cohorts that we talked about, and we think that these data provide continued validation of mutant IDH2 as a therapeutic target in AML and myelodysplastic syndromes. And we want to thank all the, um, my co-investigators.